this video, Lucy and me have some knowledge of Newton's method, which is a topic I've covered on this channel many times. In my lesson on Brent's method, I received this comment asking about a method which mixed bisection and Newton's method. It became the Newton bisection hybrid video. That same comment also mentioned a global Newton method, which stuck with me. And I was, I was reading papers on Newton fractals, you know, as you do. I came across this paper which mentioned such a method. The authors write, a well-known weakness of Newton's method is that it is locally but rarely globally convergent. To improve the situation, researchers have invented damping methods that try to increase the likelihood that an initial condition will lead to convergence. They cite these two books, one by Dennis Jr. and Snavel, the other by Hager. Both include chapters on a globally convergent Newton method, citing the same paper. This one by Armijo. We can modify Newton's method to instead of taking a normal step, take a partial step. This is the damp Newton's method using a scaling factor A, this example 0.9, will cause our method to go from diverging to converging. The trouble then becomes, how do you find a good value for A? From our normal step size, you could try, for example, 0.8 would cause a variable change there, 0.4 would be closer. In reality, we need to find A such that plugging A into this equation will give us zero, meaning we've changed one root finding problem for another. There's also the problem of when Newton's method doesn't have a solution. And this is what Armijo was looking into. In this example, starting from any point, it will eventually converge to a minimum and then shoot off to infinity. What we really want is for Newton's method to stop right there, meaning we want a value for A which will minimize this function. Of course, that means we've now changed a root finding problem for a minimization one. Or have we? What Armico realized was that all we really need is for our next point to be smaller than our current one. This actually works for root finding as well. Here's an example of what I mean. Let's just take our distances to zero and evaluate them. What we notice is that on the left, we are diverging. On the right, we are converging when each of our next points is getting smaller. Our initial strategy says, try a value for A of one. Check that it is indeed getting smaller. If it is, then keep going. But if it doesn't, divide A by two and restart. Here's what that algorithm will look like. Given our starting point and initial value for x, f, and f prime, compute fx being f of x and delta x starting at infinity. Then check if our f is small enough or our step was small enough. When either was the case, x is the solution and we can stop. Otherwise, let delta x be our step and create a temporary value t and f of t. Then let a equal to one. Check if our next point would be smaller. If it isn't, divide a by two and create a new value for t and f of t. And recheck. Otherwise, let delta x be our actual step and assign t to x and f of t to f of x. And restart the process. Let's look at our arctangent example from earlier. With normal Newton's method starting at the point 1.5, this ends diverging. But with the global version of Newton's method, we'll do one backtracking step with a of a half, otherwise letting a be one, and this converges. The same is true if we start very far away, for example, the point 100. This still converges with global Newton's method. Let's change gears now and look at what it does to fractals. Here is the Newton fractal for z cubed minus one, showing the convergence behavior in the complex plane. And this is how the behavior changes with the global Newton method. You'll notice a lot more blue, which you might think means it's taking long to converge, but when we look at the actual color mappings, it actually converges much faster. To be fair, this does hide the backtracking steps. What if after this, we now made a modification to our fractal behavior by instead of dividing by two, dividing by two i. The result looks like something out of an M.C. Escher painting. Let's 
look at one other function, which is z squared plus one, which has no real solution when you start with a real number. Here are the fractals we get for the normal and global versions of the new method. But actually picking a real number with the global one will converge to a minimum, and even some points around the real numbers will converge to a minimum. Let's examine those extra function calls. On the left, we have the arctangent. On the right, x squared plus one. On the left, starting from even very far away, a starts as a small number and then goes to one as we iterate to find a solution. On the right, even starting kind of close to the minimum, a starts as one, and as we iterate, a gets smaller. This is because on the left, we're converging to a root, on the right, we're converging to a minimum. But hold on, in our fractal example, didn't it converge quickly? Well, that's because our final ending epsilon was 10 to the minus three, so it didn't really show. Let's change gears and look at solving systems of nonlinear equations. I'm going to refer to a nonlinear system example from Iterative Methods for the Solution of the Equations by J.F. Trout. Trout gives the example of x cubed minus 3xy squared equal to 1 and 3x squared y minus y cubed equal to 0, which my plotting tool had difficulty with. So I had to change a different solver. It has these three solutions. And for a nonlinear system, we're going to need to use the inverse Jacobian, and this is actually our Jacobian that we'll be using. Let's zoom in. If we solve the system, starting at every point, we'll end up creating this fractal, which looks oddly familiar. In fact, z cubed minus 1 given into a system with x referring to the real numbers and y referring to the imaginary ones is the same. What happens if we use the global method, now adding a variable a in front of our inverse Jacobian? We get this kaleidoscopic result. If you're wondering why the output formatting changed, that's because I used a different program, in this case Julia, to make the system solving easier. Let's look at one other example. Here are the Newton and global Newton fractals from that system. Notice that the colors aren't that different. That's because these points here, where the matrix is singular, is causing everything to go awry. Let's fix that. Giving this fractal that converges much faster. Although, again, the backtracking steps are being hidden. Let's look at a larger version. Let me know which artist you think this resembles in the comments. To recap, global Newton method will converge, although that solution might be a minimum instead of a root. It also works with complex functions and systems of nonlinear equations. Don't forget about the hidden cost of those extra function calls. You could also modify this approach to work with other methods like Stephenson's method or finite difference, and they can be used to make fractals. The code I wrote, as well as the images I created, will be hosted on GitHub. As always, thanks for watching and for your continued support on this channel. Videos like this one take a very long time to make, and I always appreciate your feedback in the comments. Also, don't forget to post which artist would have made that fractal from earlier. Again, thank you for watching.